Baby, there's a shark in the water. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Baylor brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions today. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. I am Cam Stewart. We are back and it is Shark Week or at least Shark Day because if the Baylor Bears lose to Long Island tomorrow, they need to give up the football program. It was a good run. It truly was mostly the last 10, 12 years. But if that's the case, just needs to go. And look, there's worse things in the world. There are bigger tragedies. That said, I don't think they will. And I'm going to tell you why. Because today, we're going to break down Long Island Sharks football, which has had a long, illustrious history in this, their fifth year in the FCS. So that FCS Northeast team that you'll be playing in week two in your Heisman journey in college football 20-whatever, whenever they decide to make it, That's what it'll be. It was Albany last year. This year, it's the LIU Sharks. And it has been tough, tough sledding through four years for LIU. They're 0-2 on the year. So I I haven't looked it up, but it's got to be one of the only 0-2 matchups um, in college football, especially one that includes a Power 5 team. So get ready for that 11 a.m. 0-2 Baylor hosting 0-2 Long Island. That classic rivalry. I mean, it's one where you throw out the records anyway. You know, this is this is the border war. I mean, this is this is Texas OU, Army, Navy, Ohio State, Michigan. This is what we have. Baylor, Long Island. And Long Island comes into this at somehow less impressive 0-2. I mean, obviously, they're not as good a team as Baylor, at least on paper. Um, but they have scored a combined 20 points. This year, 20 in two games. It's an easy one to average out. Uh, This is a bad team at a level. I mean, really two levels below Baylor because they're not group of five. They're not even FBS. They're FCS. And yet I'm not over convinced, overly convinced uh, about this game tomorrow for the Baylor Bears. But yeah, looking at the schedule, they have lost to Ohio. Um, which is an FBS team. Uh, that was only 27 to 10. Then they lost to my Bryant Bulldogs, 21 to 10 in Smithfield, Rhode Island. So has it been the greatest start? This will be road game number three for Baylor. It's home game number three. And they did play a power five team two years ago. Um, I feel like my man, Scotty B with all the stats here. Last power five game was in 2021. They lost to West Virginia, a team that Baylor blew out that year. Not that that matters anything for this game. Uh, but they lost 66 to nothing to Neil Brown's West Virginia. So they have as many wins in Morgantown as Baylor does all time. And if you thought it was going to be bad enough, Long Island coming into this game, um, it got even worse last weekend at Bryant. They lost their starting quarterback who looked to be like one of the only bright spots of this team. He was a uh, preseason uh all NEC second team. So not good enough for first team in the Northeast Conference, but who is? And he is as Italian as they come. Luca Stanzani is his name. Born to play college football on Long Island. That's for sure. Um, Hurts his shoulder in the game. And so, uh, by the way, that took me about 15 minutes to find out that, that he got hurt in this game. He just doesn't have stats for the full game. And nobody does game reports on this team. So. That's not a great sign uh, coming in to play a Power 5 team. And they brought in a kid, this poor kid, man, Chris Howell, 6'1", 190, freshman, which is just a few pounds heavier than me. Um, 190 soaking wet is what he looks like. And he went 9 for 19 after that. So all that to say, all of that long buildup, my Scotty B buildup to say, this team stinks. This team really stinks. Um, They would have a tough time with the China Spring Cougars. Um, I might even take China Spring. I would definitely take Melissa High in that game. And the bad news for Baylor is it doesn't get much better overall. 
at least at the quarterback position. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes here, but this Long Island team stinks. Um, and to be fair, they're not as good as that Albany team that came in and lost to Baylor at McLean last year, 69 to 10. So take that how you will. This is a golden opportunity for Baylor to get out of the winless category one against a team so bad. I don't even know if they should count it as a win. If Baylor does go on to be LIU and goes one and two on the year, I think they should still be. Oh, two and one. I just, I, I just don't think that should count. This, this is a team that is barely an FCS team. Uh, they were a good division two team. They moved into FCS. Uh, this is their fifth season. So they're not even going to compete in the NEC with the likes of Stonehill and, uh, I don't know, other teams that you've never heard of. I honestly have, I have no idea who's in the NEC and I'm from the Northeast. So Baylor has the chance, has the chance this weekend in front of scores of people, like I talked about yesterday to beat the Long Island Sharks and who isn't ready for that chance. I'm blown away. I'm ready. I'm so excited to be breaking it down for you guys on Locked On Bay. We're so happy to finally be getting going. And honestly, it took so long to get here that I'm so happy to be talking to y'all. And honestly, when it first came down to it, it was all about LinkedIn Talent Solutions that got me this job. So you can thank them for that. I know a lot of people are thanking Drake, but you could thank LinkedIn Talent Solutions because they are the ones that are making that hiring process even easier for people like Locked On and for people like you with your business. So you're going to go in, you make an account, you add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile, spread the word that you're hiring. They make it so easy, simple tools. They have screening questions. They, they make it easy for you to focus and narrow down those candidates with just the right skills and experience. The ones that you're looking for, you don't want just randos applying for this job because it wastes your time. It wastes their time too. So this is going to quickly prioritize who you're going to interview, who you're going to hire for this. And it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs the number one in delivering quality hires against their leading competitors. So again, LinkedIn jobs, they help you find the qualified candidates. You don't want to be wasting your time with any of this other crap. You want to go and find the qualified candidates and you want to do it fast. So post your job for free, for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. That's how I got this. That's how the Anaheim Angels are going to get Heim Bloom. And if Baylor loses this game, that's how someone else is going to get Dave Miranda. So team terms and conditions apply. Once again, that is locked linkedin.com slash locked on college. Looking at Baylor's end of this, it's obviously better um, than the Long Island end of things, but it's not that much better. I mean, yes, they're they're a division one power five, big 12 team with the capable players on offense that we saw some spurts of the first two weeks. Uh, but the quarterback position is a major doubt. I know we all have high hopes for Sawyer Roberts. And I do too, by the way, down the line. I, I like, I like the kid's makeup. I like his arm talent. He, I, and I said this on the show yesterday, he's just not ready for this offense yet. He's not. And that, really showed uh, in week two when he really got a chance to go. I think he goes six of 12 um, in relief of Blake Shapin in week one. Um, week two, he gets the whole game and it's not much better. 12 of 28. 12 of 28, y'all. That's ugly. That's stinky, man. I could maybe go out there and get like eight of 28. So he's still better than me. But 43% of your passing being completed, that, that's not going to cut it. And, you know, for as much as he has seen some flashes of some of those um, timing throws, he can get the ball down the field. He's got a strong arm. No touchdown passes, three picks. And the, the two picks that you saw last week against Utah were just total miscommunications, both of them. And he that's what I mean when I'm saying he's just not quite on the same page with this offense. And that's understandable. That's understandable. He, in the grand scheme of things, he's not had a lot of time to work with these guys. That week one pick was a hot route that should have been in front of the receiver. It was wide open. It was a touchdown. He throws it behind him. It's a tip ball interception. But the two last week were both no bears even in the area. So that was just both miscommunications. 
one of the two, either him or the receiver, not knowing the, the play or the route. And it ends up costing Baylor. That's what gives Utah the short field and what could have been only needing a field goal. All of a sudden, you only need a touchdown. I think Utah was going to score anyway, uh, but not a great performance in week one. I know Barstool Sikkim thinks he's like the worst player ever to go on the on the planet Earth and play the, for the Baylor Bears. I don't think that's true, um, but it's still early on, and this was, this was just not the time um, for him to audition. I was thinking... Um, if he comes along in, in this in this early part of the season and Shapen is looking like the end of last year, that we could see him by we could see Sawyer by week five or six, and that would be a positive thing. That would mean uh, you know we're still in a chance to compete for something, and he's learned the offense. Unfortunately, he's thrown in there. Uh, they're not competing for much at this point, although we have not played any conference games yet. Um, and Blake Shapin's hurt, and he is the option right now. I thought we would see more of a Sawyer Robertson game plan week two last week. We kind of did in the first half. I mean, the kid at first was really he was cooking, and and Dave said this after the game. He was he was reading the defense. He was uh, finding the hot routes, making the right throws, and somewhere along the way that that confidence dipped. A confidence dip big time. And I know part of it too is he gets hurt in the third quarter and that kind of limits the playbook a little bit. But overall, he just wasn't good enough for them to win the football game. That's why he had a rock fight. That's why he had an absolute rock fight in the game against Utah. And based off what I've given you so far, we're going to see a rock fight again this week. And this is at least a benefit of you got a much weaker team coming in you got an fcs team you're probably in a healthy way looking ahead to ut a little bit um, next weekend in terms of starting to figure out what works in practice this week and starting a game plan and how that might work against texas um, i do think it will be a simple one this week i think we'll see a lot of running the football i think we're gonna see a lot of dom richardson and richard reese um my man jackson posey put out a great stat by the way i was talking a lot about dom on yesterday's show um, Jackson put out a great post on Twitter. I wish I had it in front of me, uh, that says, you know, basically when, when Baylor was riding Richard Reese for the first half, uh, and then some of last season, they were in a good position. They were six and two, or excuse me, five and two, five and three. Uh, cause then they go and win against Oklahoma. Richard doesn't get a lot of touches in that game cause he's sick. And then after that, his carries dip down, you know, he's, He's taken a brunt of the load last season and he was only a true freshman. So those numbers go down and so do Baylor's, so does Baylor's productivity. And they lose those three games, those four games after that. Um, so I, I say that Tom Richardson needs to be the feature guy, but you got to feed Reese a little bit. You got to. And I know they haven't gotten the running game going in the first two weeks because they haven't been playing with a lead most of those first two weeks. And it just hasn't been in a good scenario, both with, um, the, the situation in the game and with the, how the offensive line has been playing, it hasn't been ideal to be just running the ball down their throats. I think we're going to see that this week. And LIU against the teams they've gone against, you know, again, Ohio, not Ohio State, Ohio and Bryant. Um, they haven't been that bad uh, defensively overall, but especially against the run. Um, I don't think They've allowed even 300 total yards. So, I mean, hey, that's something because they're playing up against competition. Um, Baylor needs to go for 200 plus. Needs to this week or else you've got even deeper issues than you already have. So is Sawyer the guy? Not yet. Not yet. He could well be here in the future. Um, again, I, I do love the arm strength. I love the rhythm he was in in the first half and reading the defense, but it, it came crashing down quickly and it just shows you how much he still has to learn. And I fully expect that when Blake Shapin is back, he's back. He's the guy. He was really impressive in week one. Um, he was impressive at times last year too. And I thought, I thought he was better than a lot of people gave him credit for by no means. Was he excellent by the end of the season? Absolutely not. I, I don't want to say that like he deserves zero blame, but there's flashes there and he looked really good in week one. 
Um, so I think when Blake comes back, he's back. I think with Sawyer Robertson in there, uh, they have a great chance this week. But against UT, if we don't see drastic improvement against LIU at the quarterback position, I don't, I don't think he's the guy to lead them to victory against the top five team in the nation. But we'll see. This is not going to be one of the funnest games in Baylor history. And coming up in a minute, we're going to talk about how uh, or what they could learn from it. There's a lot of other great games on the slate this weekend, which is why you should be watching College Football Live today. If you haven't, watched it, listen to it. Our old pal Drake Toll is leading the way, and it's a fun show to be around. Those guys actually have really good chemistry for guys who haven't been together very long, and they are breaking down all the biggest games that you need to watch this weekend. And to make things a little more interesting, you should probably head over to FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You got, of course, the, the games Thursday through Saturday in college. You have got the Sunday NFL games. That's in full swing now. Week two, you, you learn a little bit more about it. So go over to FanDuel. Again, America's number one sports book. Because right now, if you haven't already, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So you're going to need to keep track of all those games come Sunday. This is a brilliant way to do it. NFL Sunday ticket, it's totally worth it. I do it because I need to watch the Patriots every week, but it's expensive. So $100 off for all customers who bet $5. And now is the best time. If that doesn't convince you, I'm going to convince you right now. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. This app is so easy to use. It's so easy. I can do it. And you guys know. Clearly, I'm not very bright. Uh, so even I can do it. It's so great. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on, kick off the NFL season week two, and getting into that conference schedule of the college football season. Again, that's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, official partner of the National Football League. Not the most exciting game on the slate this weekend, Baylor and Long Island. I'd be lying to you if I told you it was, but you're going to watch it anyway, and I'm going to watch it anyway, and we're going to be at McLean, and we're going to be cheering together. No cheering in the press box, actually, unless you work for Utah Athletics. I'll just leave that one there. Um, so, 2-0-2 two -oh -two teams, what can you even learn from this? I I've been talking about it the whole show. This Long Island team is so far down the totem pole in terms of football uh, prestige that it's getting me to wonder, can we learn anything about Baylor from this weekend? Not much, not much because even at Owen two and what we've seen so far this year, Baylor should be much better than this long Island team. Now that said, I just talked about it the whole segment. Sawyer Robertson, take it with a grain of salt if he has a good game, but we can learn some things about Sawyer Robertson. And mainly, it's the game plan. Again, I can't say it enough. He's not built for this wide zone running type of offensive scheme. But I fully expect, and I expected it last week, didn't get it as much, but against a weaker team, I expect to see more of a Sawyer Robertson game plan than a Blake Shapin game plan. Blake, when he's out there, he needs quick throws, short throws, get him into a rhythm, uh, go for some yak lot to the tight ends too. And that's what you would primarily see in this wide zone offense. Now I said it on the show a couple months ago with Drake, Zach Wilson, when he's at BYU was kind of an anomaly for this Jeff Grimes offense, but he was a kid with a big arm who had a lot of success at BYU. So I want to see if maybe Jeff will dip into more of the Zach Wilson playbook with Sawyer Robertson of a guy who was used to doing those first reads, but chucking the ball down the field, not reading the defense a ton and being able to use off that arm, show off that arm strength. So that is one thing you can learn from this week is just Sawyer Robertson looking better overall. Again, take it with like half a grain of salt, but anything positive is positive for him. If he looks just a fish out of water, that's a huge red flag, a humongous red flag. So they'll be going up against some dudes the week after against UT. So can you learn something from this game? Yeah. Not a lot. Defensively, Baylor should be dominant in this game. Uh, this is a team that scored 10 points in each of their first two games with the starting quarterback, and they're going to have the backup in. So most likely. Well, I, I mean, I got to admit, I don't know Lucas Stanzani's injury status going into this week, uh, but 
he didn't finish the game last week. It was a shoulder injury, so not a great sign for a quarterback. Baylor should dominate this game. I am finally predicting a Baylor victory, and by finally, I mean I didn't last week, and I am going to this week, and probably won't for a long time after that. Unless they win like 120 to nothing, then maybe I'll pick a, a victory against UT. We'll see. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for stopping in and making us your first listen every day. We're still going to have postmortems. I don't know what I'm going to call it if Baylor actually wins the game, and then we're going to have a more measured reaction for Monday's show, Locked on Baylor. Definitely uh, follow us along on socials at Locked on Baylor. Subscribe on YouTube. Anywhere you get your podcast is where you're going to find me and this wonderful show. So let's go Bears. And until next week, this has been and always will be Locked on Baylor.